So this is the pulpit. If I put my notes on it, it's gonna, <laughs> they're, they're going up, okay? <laughs> so I'm just gonna walk from side to side. I got the sinners over here, and the saints over here, and we'll just, uh, you know, <laughs> you chose wisely. <laughs> anyway, uh, Christmas Eve. Uh, yeah, Sheila was right. This is actually the day when all Christmas shopping begins for me. You know, I think started in about March. I, you know, take this, but not me. I, uh, I didn't procrastinate. I mean, Jesus, you know, came at the right time, and hopefully my gifts will too. <laughs> Although uh, last night we, we had started a new tradition. We watched. Um, that great film classic, Jingle All the Way. Uh, and so we all sat around and watched that, and I realized, oh, wait, what if nothing is there in the stores when I go tomorrow? <laughs> the last possible moment. Anyway, uh, Christmas is, a, is a, it's an odd time. It, it, I, I like it because we almost uh, uh, choose to set aside our stuff for a little while, right? And, uh, and, and start looking for some joy, uh, which is a good thing to do, all right? Christmas is good. Now, it does sometimes, anybody have a family? <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> wow. Either you're all liars or, <laughs> okay, so um, I, I did say, um, you know, I have a very strange uh, family, um, and uh, we, we'd go like 20, 25 years without speaking. Uh, we'd have family get-togethers, but no one would talk. <laughs> you walk up and say, hi, how you doing? And they turn and walk away. And so it was, uh, so that's, that's my background. But uh, we were invited to go down to San Diego this week uh, for a Christmas dinner with the siblings. <laughs> Don't give me that look, Susie. <laughs> so, <laughs> so now this is a typical family, maybe like your neighbors. You know, it's not like you, but you know, like your neighbors, where we, we have the really serious religious people, the good people. Uh, my brother and his wife, in fact, had just come in the day before from Jerusalem, where they were leading a group of pilgrims in the Holy Land tour, because they wanted to go to Bethlehem a few days before Christmas. Uh, they don't think I'm a Christian, but... Uh, they're serious about it, and so it was at their house. And then, and then I've got another brother who's like a pagan gangster, drug farmer. You know, like, uh, he, uh, we did not talk about the second arson that happened about three weeks ago, uh, so we didn't talk about that. That was good. Um, and right in the middle of dinner, my good sister-in-law announced that she's listening to the audio book of. Um, I didn't sign up for this, you know, my blue book, uh, Finding Joy When Everything's Going Wrong. And, and she said, I'm about halfway through listening on the audiobook. Not a smile. Mm. You know, I, I'm halfway through. And then she said, I think she was complimenting me. Well, she said, You know, John, you sound like you've really matured. <laughs> Uh, you know what? It could be that it's the voice of the guy who's reading it on the audiobook, the voice actor. <laughs> he may sound mature and thoughtful and kind and all those things that I'm not. And uh, she said, oh, I didn't think of that. It just seemed like you sounded like uh, you're really mature. <laughs> so this is my Christmas. I'm doing good. And, uh, and I think about that and the kind of the odd... Uh, mix of pagans and believers and everything in the middle and I thought you know that is so much like the world that Jesus was born into right there just like my crazy family you know um, and um, and he chose to enter into a world that's filled with hyper religious good people maybe a little judgmental and uh, and uh, Crazy ass uh, druggy criminal people, you know. And, uh, and he went, I am choosing to be born into your life and into your world. And I think about that and I go, um, he didn't come into a world that was all together. 
Um, he didn't come to the place where only the true believers gathered to accept him. Um, I guess he wasn't afraid of us. Isn't that strange that God is not afraid of us? He's not afraid of our issues, our, our deals. He's not afraid of our struggles. He's not afraid of our questions. He doesn't pull back and go, oh, I'm not going around these people because they've got questions. Unimpressed. Um, but every, even though he entered our world and, and we have a chance to receive him into our hearts and our lives and our minds and our relationships and our work and, you know, and have him live in us and through us, even though, this may come as a shock, do you know that there's some people who don't get it? There's some people that, that don't, it's not that they don't believe or they don't like the idea of Jesus breaking into our world in a radical way. What they don't want is Jesus. Anyway, now, I probably shared this with you because I, I do that a lot, but... Um, because I'm old, I don't remember what we've talked about, okay? <laughs> Somebody said, oh, then I got called yesterday afternoon to come and, and uh, share with you today. And, and, uh, and Chris said, well, you know, you probably got a bunch of, you know, Christmas sermons all written out. You can just grab one. And I went, written out? That would be... <laughs> Why didn't I think of that? Oh, that would have saved a lot of trouble. Okay. So anyway, uh, Gianni Versace. The, the fashion designer, uh, murdered a few years ago, remember that? And uh, tragically, and, uh, and uh, I didn't really know who he was, but um, he was being interviewed in New Yorker magazine. I, I asked that, he was, oh, what's, he, what's he do, what's he famous for? She goes, uh, he was known for being the man who could take a woman of any stature, any nationality, and any appearance, and make them look like a hooker. <laughs> <laughs> Well, okay. <laughs> uh, I didn't say that. That was Eileen. <laughs> so anyway, uh, they interviewed, uh, New Yorker Magazine was doing an interview with him. And uh, this was a few months before he was murdered. So it was actually timely. And he said that one day he would die, as everyone else dies, and every success, he says, transforms itself into something that ends... And he was talking about the end of his life, which he didn't know would be, you know, that year. Um, and uh, this is what he said. I don't have illusions. I'm happy to live. I live intensely. And I don't have any regrets. And then the interviewer asked, well, are you religious? And he smiled and said it with a big grin and said, yes. I believe in God. But I'm not the kind of religious person who goes to church, who believes in that fairy tale of uh, Jesus born in the stable with a donkey. And then to, and then to clarify, uh, oh no, I'm not stupid. <laughs> I can't believe that God, with all the power he has, all that power, had to have himself born in a stable. It just wouldn't have been comfortable. <laughs> We're gonna miss him. <laughs> it wouldn't have been comfortable. I can't believe it, how stupid God was to be born in a stable and be uncomfortable. God would not do that. I can't believe in a God who would do that. You know, I thought he was gonna say, I don't believe in a God who's gonna let bad things happen to nice people, you know? No, no, no. I'm not gonna believe in a God who's as so stupid as to be uncomfortable when he's born in the state. That's a theologian. And, uh, and I think about that, and I think, um, I don't mind being uncomfortable. Do you? I like, I don't, I'm so glad they got rid of the pews, the wooden pews. I spent a lifetime hurting myself on those things. Yeah, they padded chairs, you know. 
<laughs> Next, it'll be a padded room, probably for me, but you know, it's, it's, it's comfortable. And uh, and so, uh, I think there's nothing wrong with wanting comforts, right? There's nothing wrong with that. But to turn away from the living God who breaks into our world in a radical way because we think God's too stupid to not be uncomfortable. That boggles my mind. I think actually it's kind of symbolic that Jesus was born uncomfortably in our world. And the very fact of his birth and the way it happened makes people uncomfortable. It makes us uncomfortable. It doesn't fit our categories. It doesn't fit our worldview. It doesn't fit how we think things ought to be. Um, and you know what? I just can't help but think, after years and years and years of, of preaching and stuff, I can't help but think that God is just totally not impressed with our comfort levels. I don't think it really matters much to God if we're comfortable. I think what matters is, and, and, and one of the reasons he broke into our world so radically is to see that we're comforted, right? Not comfortable, but that we're comforted. Maybe the, the miracle of Christmas is um, the radical, radical nature of God not letting us go along with our illusions that everything's okay, that everything's going to work out in the end. Um, He broke into our real world, our real situations, our real families, our real relationships, our real issues, of which we have many represented in this room, a lot of issues. And he broke into the middle of them to say, let me make a difference. Let me change your world. Let me change you. Let me, let me live in you and if you have trouble loving somebody, just ask and let me love them through you. If you have trouble believing certain things, just ask. Let me teach you, show you. If you were born into a crazy family, like West Wall, you know, Sam, you know. If you were born in that crazy family, let me give you a new family that you choose. Of brothers and sisters who are going to come around you and uh, care for you and your weird dysfunctional family you were born in starts to fade away. They don't matter as much. Right? Could I give you a new family? feel hopeless? Let me give you hope. Let me in you give you hope. Not that you get a self-help book like uh, the one I wrote and trying to do everything and get hopeful. You know, that just doesn't work. Okay, Self-help books don't work. But, buy it anyway. But, uh, <laughs> just say it. <laughs> and the audio version, if you would think I'm immature. <laughs> Sorry, I got off track there. Uh, but uh, seriously, people have wasted their lives trying to figure out how to be hopeful. Trying to do little exercises and disciplines to be more hopeful and more faithful and more loving and, uh, and more faithful. You know, and they're all wrong because it never was what we do to fix things up. It never was that. It was always Jesus being very uncomfortably born into a stable to break into our world to give us a radical transformation of his presence 
and his love in us and through us. And if we miss that, we miss the whole thing. It doesn't matter how together you're able to put your life. It doesn't matter one bit. Because we never get it quite right. I, I worked uh, for a little short time with a pastor at the University Press when I was there, uh, Earl Palmer. And uh, he's written a number of great books and a good thinker and everything. And he, um, he had the insight that uh, what, what, how God saves us in Jesus. He said, picture yourself on a cruise ship. And uh, you're, you're out at sea, you left the little island or wherever, and, or the Alaska shore, and you get out to sea, and the ship starts sinking. And um, there's different people on the boat, and some, it's like there's somebody, they don't know how to swim. And so when the ship goes down, you know, they jump into the water, take about three dog paddles, and go down and die. But there's some people, me, you know, I could swim pretty good in a small backyard pool. <laughs> you know, I, I've done that before. So uh, I think I'm okay. So I jump into the water and I swim. I'm not in great shape. I'm an old guy, but I swim like half a mile in the open sea. This is not a triathlete kind of thing, but you know, I'm just pretty good, right? A half a mile in the open sea, and then I sink. Then there's an Olympic swimmer who's trained their whole life and they have medals and trophies, they have all this stuff. In fact, they got the gold medals and they were so proud of them they went home and bronzed them. It was, it was, it was just so nice. And, and they, uh, they're in shape of their lungs, their breathing, their capacity. And so they dive into the water gracefully and uh, probably wear a few medals. And they swim, no kidding, 30 miles in the open sea. And then they drown. Now, point. It doesn't matter how good you're able to make your life. It doesn't matter how, how good you are at shaping everything so that it looks good. It doesn't matter. Because we all need to be saved. We all need God to break into our world and do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. And that's why Jesus was born so uncomfortably in that stable. Versace didn't get it. He understood, yeah, it was uncomfortable. But he thought that was the reason to turn away from God. That was the reason to reject Jesus. Instead of realizing that actually is the reason to invite him into our hearts and into our lives. Let him do for you what you can never do for yourself. Let go of the controls this Christmas. It'll probably make the people around you happier if you stop controlling. <laughs> I'm just telling myself that. You know, I'm not telling anybody else. <laughs> um, <clears throat> But it changes everything. And so, um, even though, or maybe because Jesus was born into a stable, and broke into our world radically at Christmas, radically and uncomfortably, I say Merry Christmas to you, to each one of you. And I hope God blesses you this year and that you discover that when you look in his face that he's smiling at you. And he's not flowering. And he's not angry at you. And he's not disappointed in you. But that he just loves you. Let him bring your comfort. Let him bring your comfort.